choosing your first big bike is exciting. But it can also be confusing and it can be stressful. So I've made this video for two reasons. One, to talk about what you should be looking for in a first big bike and two, to determine if the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 should make that cut. For me, there are five categories to consider for your first big bike. I'm going to break them down to desire, power, ergonomics, maintenance and value. So what should you be looking for in your first big bike and does the Interceptor 650 make the cut? Let's get to it. The first one is very simple, desire. For this one, you've got to kind of throw caution to the wind a little bit and only focus on the bikes that make you go, oh my. You put the hours in, it's your hard earned time and pay that's buying this bike and you deserve this. And let's compare desire for a bike to something a little more universal. Let's take romance. When you're looking for love, what are you looking for? Some of the more shallow folks out there might just base their search on looks alone. But of course, the more mature among us, the, the deeper among us will consider at least two things, looks and personality. So apply that to your bike search. Do you browse the internet longing over pictures of the Interceptor? Imagining yourself polishing up those engine cases, caressing the fuel tank, stripping her down and getting up close and personal. And for the record, yes, we're still talking about bikes. And personality wise, what personality does it have? Does it suit your personality? Are you compatible? The Interceptor is youthful, but classic. It's fun, it's carefree. It's not extroverted, it's not aggressive, and it's not in your face, but it's not an introvert either. It likes to meet new people wherever it goes. It's more of a long walks on the beach type of bike than skydiving and bungee jumping, that's for sure. If you don't look at the Interceptor and think, that's a bike I want to ride, the chances are you're not gonna be happy with it as a first big bike. But if you're watching this video, there's a high chance that you do love that classic style of the Interceptor, and that should be enough to put a big tick in the box as it comes to desire. You either want it or you don't. Next on my list is power. When it comes to buying a first big bike, the topic of power is sure to come up. It's a topic that I think bikers get a little too obsessed over. Now, power is on my list, but probably not for the reasons that you might think. For me, there's a huge spectrum of power when it comes to motorcycles, with a tiny little portion being underpowered and a really big portion being overpowered. And by that, I don't mean that these bikes shouldn't exist or that you shouldn't buy them or that nobody should ride them. So let me explain. The underpowered end of the spectrum, and I'm excluding 125s entirely here, but let's say 250s and above with that 20 to 30 horsepower range. I want to stress here before I even go on, I actually have a real soft spot for lower powered bikes. Maybe it's because I like an underdog and people do seem to write them off so easily without realising just how much fun there is to be had thrashing a low power bike around. Or perhaps it's because I'm just sick to death of guys on 120 horsepower sports bikes looking down their noses at smaller, lower horsepower machines. While they do 100 on the straights and 30 in the bends and think that power equals pace. Pace is determined by skill, planning, throttle control, cornering ability, the ability to plan and keep momentum. That being said, of course bikes with lower horsepower do begin to impose some limitations on how you can ride them. You are going to lose some ability to overtake at higher speeds you're going to lose roll-on power. You're probably going to find that every BMW on the road wants to overtake you. And if you're okay with that, fine. They should absolutely be in your list. Now, what I think is important for a new rider to consider, especially somebody who's perhaps been riding a 125 as a learner bike for some time, you've already been limited by power all of this time. So you want to have something that's going to give you that big jump to the next level of power that you're going to feel like you're gaining something from getting your big bike license. So I think it makes sense not to buy something that's going to limit you again. So you should buy the most powerful bike you can get then, right? Obviously not. Clearly, a Hayabusa is not going to be the sensible first big bike. You can buy one if you want, but it's not going to be the sensible one. So let's talk about the bikes at the other end of the spectrum, the overpowered bikes, if we can call them that. And I'm calling them overpowered specifically in this video because we're talking about a decision that a new rider might be making. And for real world on-road use for a newer rider, there's only so much of the power band that you can use safely and legally. And actually, with many of these bikes, that extends to anyone riding them on public roads. That's not to say that you should never buy an overpowered bike. It's just to recognize that you'll never use the bike to its full potential on the road. But there are benefits. More power is going to give you a more thrilling throttle response. It's going to give you far more significant roll on power. The ability to overtake and power out of bends in any gear. 
That's the appeal of high horsepower machines for about 90% of the riders who choose them. And the other 10% do so because of ego or stupidity, but we can ignore them. However, it is important to acknowledge that the higher powered the bike is, the more your ride becomes an exercise and restraint. Experienced riders understand this. While you've been used to squeezing every last bit of power from your 125 single, your learner bike, litre sport bikes require the opposite approach and skill that you perhaps haven't learned yet if you are a new rider. And there's a reason that 47 horsepower is that A2 compliance limit. It's just about perfect for a younger, new rider. It's powerful enough to give you that jump in performance over Learner Legal 125 bikes to keep you satisfied for, for quite some time, while not requiring an awful lot of restraint, especially not in the throttle. Will you get bored of 47 horsepower and want more? Maybe, perhaps, but that's why this is your first big bike, not your BBFL. When it comes to power, the Interceptor probably offers enough power to provide excitement for new riders, and long-term satisfaction. And I'm a fairly experienced rider now, and that 47 horsepower is plenty to keep me happy. So I would absolutely recommend the Interceptor 650 as a first big bike in terms of power that it has and how it delivers it. Again, don't obsess over power. Focus on other more important aspects, such as handling, character, and our next topic, which is ergonomics. So what does ergonomics actually mean? Well, I put the dictionary definition up on screen here just now, and if we keep things very simple, a motorbike is made to be ridden, therefore better ergonomics means it is easier to ride. Fairly simple concept, but widely overlooked by many new riders, who often focus on style over substance. Some kids grow up admiring those big, loud, fast sport bikes. Those wide-eyed kids become adults, and those adults get jobs and get married at 24 and divorced at 26 and then buy a sports bike with matching one-piece leathers and a helmet that costs half as much as the bike. Some teenagers watch Sons of Anarchy every night alone in their bedroom, dreaming of the day that they can show off their Grim Reaper tattoo while they cruise the streets in their Sportster, but settle instead for a Kiwi 125, a leather cut and a tin of black spray paint. And let's not forget about the Cafe Racer Custom Kids with the knee-high clip-ons and a skateboard for a seat. Don't get me wrong, these dudes look f***ing cool and they've got the lower back problems and the haemorrhoids to show for it. Joking aside, sports bikes, cruisers, cafe racers, these bikes are all awesome and my jokes are just for fun. But these bikes all offer extreme ergonomics in one way or another. For me, a beginner bike should be something with neutral ergonomics. Sports bikes and cafe racers tilt the rider forward, making you work harder to balance. With weight in your wrists, slow manoeuvres become harder to master and your body needs to work harder. Your inputs are all amplified. And that's perfectly fine for experienced riders, but it's hard work for beginners, as you're making your brain and your body work harder to master basic controls of the bike. Cruisers put your legs out front, arms raised, and make harder work of slow maneuvers and cornering for a new rider too. What you want as a beginner, in my opinion, is neutral. What I mean by neutral, mostly upright, legs at 90 degrees, feet placed somewhere below the rider, but not too tucked up like you would have with a sports bike. Arms outstretched, but with a bend in the elbow, no weight on the wrists, the ability to sit completely upright, back straight. This neutral stance makes it easy to control the bike during slow maneuvers, where a new rider is probably more likely to struggle with the extra weight of a big bike. It makes cornering more natural as well, allowing you to focus on techniques like counter steering, adjusting your position, turning your head, looking into the bends, looking out of the bends, all without having to contort your body. It allows you to relax when you're riding and concentrate on the ride. Road surface hazards, other vehicles, junctions, speed approaching bends, the stuff that really keeps you safe as a beginner and comes more naturally over time with experience. I'm of the opinion that new riders should always sway towards these types of bikes, naked standards, retros, scramblers, even road biased adventure bikes as well, which is where the Interceptor 650 comes in. The ergonomics here are as neutral as it gets, because it's a motorbike in its most basic form, designed to fit the human body. The minute I sat on my Interceptor, it just felt right. Couple that with everything we've said so far about power delivery on the Interceptor, and you have the makings of a perfect first bike. Next, we're going to talk about maintenance. While most car drivers don't know the difference between the flux capacitor and the indicator fluid, it's different for bikers. Sure, you can still pay somebody to service and maintain your bike, but there's essential maintenance checks and tasks that if they're neglected, are not only gonna ruin your pride and joy, but they'll also create a significant safety risk for you. The motorbike and the rider are far more symbiotic than the car and the driver. The better you know your way around the bike, 
the more you maintain it personally, the more you're going to trust it. The Interceptor leans strongly towards the simple end of the spectrum when it comes to maintenance. Firstly, and I think it's a really important point, the brand new Interceptor is equal to used bike money. What I mean by that, here in the UK, it's a little over £6,000 to buy one brand new. Now that would buy you a four-year-old Street Twin, a six-year-old Ducati Scrambler, and a three-year-old Honda CB650R, which are just a few of this bike's competitors. And I'm not here to argue which one is better, but you get the point. You're spending used bike money on a brand new bike. Why does that matter? Well, firstly, it means you don't have to worry about the history of the bike, whether it's been abused by the previous owner. And secondly, you're getting a bike with a three-year warranty and three-year roadside assistance. You shouldn't have to fork out anything to maintain it as a new rider other than your day-to-day -day maintenance. And if anything does go wrong, you're covered. And when it does come to the day-to-day -day stuff, there are a few things to look for in a first bike that will make your life easier. The first one, naked is better. Oh my. No fairings, panels, bodywork, or anything to be removed to do basic maintenance and checks. That one's a fairly obvious one. Secondly, having a center stand as standard to make the majority of basic maintenance tasks a breeze. Adjusting and cleaning your chain, oil changes, cleaning spokes on your wheels, checking for spoke damage, adjusting suspension. Something as simple as a center stand makes a big difference to your day-to-day -day maintenance. When it comes to maintenance for the basic stuff that most riders are likely to do themselves, the Interceptor is a great choice. But the same could be said about a lot of bikes in this category. If you do fancy trying your hand at servicing and your own repairs, because the Interceptor's amassed such a cult status in its short little time here on Earth, you're going to find a lot of content on how to maintain this bike with a quick YouTube search. Oil changes, filter changes, even valve clearances are all simple tasks on this bike that can be carried out by anyone who can use a spanner and follow a YouTube video. And if you would rather pay a mechanic, time is money and the simplicity of the Interceptor is likely to result in lower labour costs from your local bike mechanic. And again, while many of these points can be said for many of the bikes in this category, the Interceptor sits among the simplest to maintain, but also boasts great styling, phenomenal value up front with a three-year warranty, making it a great choice for a new rider. And the last thing that I think new riders should be looking for is value. This is your first big bike. First. So there's two important points where value is considered. There's upfront cost and there's resale value. Everyone has their own budget, so let's not suggest this bike is cheap or affordable because that might not be the case for everybody. It is priced among the lowest in this category though. And while there's plenty of middle-aged men with lined pockets jumping on bikes for the first time, there's a reason why Royal Enfield pitched this bike to the A2 market. Younger riders getting onto two wheels for the first time, students, part-timers, young adults in entry-level positions, most of them are unlikely to be searching for a Kawasaki ZH2 for their first bike. And there's a reason this bike's been so popular. When you're looking at 650 Twin, A2 compliant, when we're talking about classic looks, three-year warranty, and everything else we've been talking about, the Interceptor is a winner here. And as for resale value, we've established that a brand new Interceptor starts at around £6,200. Right now, to buy a three-year-old Interceptor with relatively low mileage, you're looking at about £5,000. A loss over three years of £1,200. If you buy this bike, maintain it well, take care of it, and sell it on in the future, you're not going to lose a ton of money. But why should resale value even matter, you may ask? Well, it's your first big bike for a reason. There's every chance that you're going to move on to something else. As any biker's wife is going to tell you, there's always another next bike on the horizon. Bikes are to bikers what girlfriends are to John Mayer. Each one's the best one yet. Each one's the star of your next album until the next one comes along. And that's okay for bikers. Maybe not for John Mayer, but that's his business. For you and I, there will always be other bikes. But for your first one, in my opinion, the Interceptor makes a really, really strong case for itself. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Have a great day and thanks for watching.